Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to start a set of examples where we're using Coulomb's law to find the forces on adjacent charges. And we're starting with something very simple and we'll work, out, uh, work ourselves up to some more complicated examples. But first we start with just two charges, a distance d apart, and each of, each of the two charges, q1 and q2, and this of course should say q2, that's the second charge, they have the value of q, so they are equal in value on the charge. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the force F on Q2 due to the presence of the other charge Q1, and then we're going to find the force on Q1 due to the presence of Q2. Now, if we do the first part, part A, and we look at the drawing, we see that there's another positive charge close to this charge right here. So this charge is going to feel the force of repulsion of this charge, and that means Q2 is going to be experiencing a force in this direction. So we'll call that the force between 1 and 2. Now, Q1 is also going to feel a force of repulsion because of the presence of Q2, and that force is going to be pointing in this direction, and so we can say that this here is the force F between 1 and 2 as well. And it turns out, using Newton's third law, we, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, the magnitude of these two forces are equal, it's just that the direction of the two forces is in opposite direction. So at least the magnitude would be the same. To find the magnitude, we're going to use Coulomb's law. And so we say then, okay, in that case, we have the force one between 1 and 2, which is equal to the force between 2 and 1. I guess you can write it like that if you want. They're the same. This is equal to K times Q1, which is Q, times Q2, which is Q divided by the distance between them squared, the distance is d, and we square that. So the magnitude of the force is going to be equal to k q squared divided by d squared. Now, if we're trying to find the force, these are of course not scalar quantities, these are vector quantities. So what we can then say is that the force in this direction, let me redraw the, the two charges, so we have the charge over there, we have a charge over here. We have a distance d between the two, like that. And so we can say is that the force here, F12, and maybe what I'll call this, I'm going to call this F21, just to kind of get a feel for it, that they are equal in magnitude, but they are indeed pointing in the opposite direction. This is the force on 2 due to the presence of 1. This is the force on 1 due to the presence of 2, if you want to look at it that way. All right, so this is now a vector quantity. And to write the, the result of that down in a vector quantity, we can say that F12 is equal to the magnitude of that force, which we have right here, which is K Q squared divided by distance squared in the positive X direction. So we write an X with a little hat on that that gives us the direction in the uh, positive X direction. And then, if we want to write this force right here, if we call this force F21, uh, of course that's the magnitude of the force, if we want to make that into a vector, we put a little arrow on that, and we can say then that F21, which is the same magnitude as F12, which is KQ squared over D squared, but since it's pointing in the negative direction, we want to put a negative sign in front of that, and put the direction as a vector. So those are the two results of the two forces, one pointed to the right, one pointed to the left, the same magnitude, the only difference is that one has a positive direction, the other one has a negative direction. And that's how it's done.